Okay, so this is part four of our uh, trolley series, and uh, now we are creating this uh, area here, this thing here, uh, that lets uh, the satellite uh, pivot up and down, uh, like that. So uh, we're going to create this base here. Uh, but uh, first of all, let's uh, first make sure that uh, we join uh, this part here, because right now you can see that uh, if I hit, L, if I select any vertex here and hit L, you can see that this is a separate uh, mesh uh, from uh, the main mesh. I want it to be a single mesh, and uh, for that I'm going to use booleans. Now you can use booleans uh, through modifiers, or you can use them uh, directly in edit in edit mode of your mesh. So to do that, you need you just need to select the part that you want to join or subtract uh, from uh, from the uh, from the other mesh, and then you can just go under uh, the face uh, settings here. Then you'll find the option intersect a stroke boolean so if i if i do that you can see that uh, we are making a cut out of this uh, mesh but uh, instead of using the difference operation we want to change it to our uh, union so that we join this and you can see now uh, we you can actually see that this is joined uh, directly to this and that's what we want uh, so i could do this for this side here but uh, since we're going to add a symmetry since we have the symmetry uh, we can use the mirror modifier uh, to handle that to handle that for, for us so let me first also turn off uh, this bevel modifier and uh, also let me start because i can see that uh, i have you can see that i have a large end gone here and uh, sometimes you want to reduce uh, the the end gone uh, the size of the end gone so uh, for that let me just join this here it doesn't really matter that much uh, since we are going to be uh, using since we are not going to use armatures or bend this in any form, we, since we are not going to deform uh, the mesh itself, uh, so it, but uh, I just want to make uh, to keep my uh, my mesh a little bit polished. So yeah, but uh, so yeah, I think we're good. So now I can go in and start deleting our parts uh, that I that, that I want to use to have the mod the mirror modifier uh, work work on. So let me just delete this portion so that I remain with only this side like this and now I can add uh, my mirror modifier make sure it's above the bevel and uh, now I can add have this like that and uh, we are good to go uh, if I want I can also cut this area like this so that I can reduce uh, the end gone around there maybe join this like that have this like that yeah, I think that's good uh, then we can make this, uh, I'll just call it a pivot area. So for that, I'm just going to start with this area here, this thing here, and use Shift D to duplicate uh, that face, maybe push it inside a bit here, and then separate it and make it its own object uh, so that I can flip it around. So And I, just so I can flip it exactly where I want it to be flipped, I'll just select that edge and then that edge so that my pivot point is at the center there. Then shift S to have the cursor move to the selection uh, so it's at the center there. Then now I can select this, then hit uh, the period key uh, so that I can change the pivot point uh, to the 3D cursor. Now I can rotate this by 90 degrees or rotate this by 180 so that it's facing di directly down uh, to have something like that. And uh, now I need to change my pivot point back to median. And uh, now I can just select these edges, push them down uh, like this. Again, the design we're going for is going to be a little bit different. Uh, as I said, we're just using this as a base just for inspiration and not to copy exactly what we have here. That's why you see that uh, my design is going to be a little bit different uh, from this. So now I can select this edge and push it outside like this so that we have that be angled a bit. Let me just see to solidify a bit more. And, uh, maybe push this just a bit so that we have a smooth transition from that circle uh, to this triangle here. Now I can select this outside ring. Make sure I, I'm not selecting any of the edges inside there like so, then extrude, uh, make sure I have clipping turned on for the mirror so that we have something like 
that. Now this would act as the hinge for this set light. And uh, just to ha have some bit of detail, I can come in here, select this edge ring. So I can select that edge and then control select uh, the, that edge there so that we can select everything in between there. Then hit E to extrude along the X axis like that and then hit F uh, to fill that in. And, uh, now if I scale this down, I can see that I don't get an even scale uh, because we are scaling uh, via med median point uh, which is known at uh, the center of this uh, selection uh, but uh, what I can do is uh, sorry the center of this object so what I can do I can change uh, the pivot point to be uh, to active element and then select this edge as the last element uh, so that I make it the active element and now if, if I scale this down and see I'm scaling it proportionally I'm scaling the circle proportionally uh, to have something now I can select this edge loop and then use the bevel tool, Ctrl B, uh, to bevel that edge. Uh, I need to reset my profile, but I think this actually looks better. I wanted to reset my profile so that it looks like this, but I think this gives me a more interesting look. Uh, maybe I'll just reduce the segments. Maybe increase the profile just a bit like that and uh, push this out like that. So we have something like that. And uh, you can see that uh, we have a bit of some details here. Uh, maybe let's try adding that as well. So if I select this and hit I to insert the selection like that, then I don't need these faces. So I can make sure that I have clipping on, you have clipping on, and then push this in, then delete them so that we don't have that. Just want to make sure that uh, this is a full circle. Again, I'm going to change my pivot point uh, back to median so that we scale this to have something like that. I'm trying to push these so that I have that kind of bulge in here. And select this and uh, push the, I don't know, I need, I think what I'm going to do is just add a circle here, uh, orient it towards the view. Scale it down. Because I want to get a perfect circle and also maybe reduce the number of segments, something like 16. And uh, scale this down again uh, with the radius like that. And uh, I can turn off clipping right now and just delete all these face vertices on this side. I then push these back here just so that uh, this is uh, at the same level as all the other vertices, I'm just going to select all vertices on this side, scale them along the x-axis uh, by zero so that I'm sure that uh, they're in the same position. Now I can delete this end gone and start bridging, connecting these faces uh, with this face. So something like that. And so we don't have an exact match for uh, the faces we have here, but uh, that's okay. So we just have to work with what we got here. Something like that. Can even just select everything, just select uh, the entire loop here, like that. Hit F uh, to create an end gun, and then select this inside gun. And then if you want to have this connected, you can just right click, uh, then triangulate uh, the face. And then, so that is, it's, it changes it from an end gone to a triangulated mesh. And then try select right click again uh, to change, to convert this to uh, quads uh, so that you remove, you reduce the number of, uh, you reduce the number of, uh, how are they call uh, triangles. Now let's do the same here. Let's first triangulate. Uh, Ctrl T, and then right click, uh, Alt J to remove, or use the shortcut Alt J. Yeah, something like that. So I think I can fix a few issues we have here by moving these vertices around. I 
think we are good there. Maybe even just bevel this a bit so that we have two vertices there. I'm just trying to improve uh, the topology there and that's why I'm doing this extra work. But uh, it's not really that necessary since we are not going to rig this or bend uh, the mesh here. So now I can create this that bulge uh, by pushing this outside, adding a loop and then pushing it out, maybe even adding an extra loop, have something like so. Now, I just want to make sure that uh, I increase the bevel angle so that we don't add a bevel for every edge we have here. So let me increase this to something like 45. And uh, also, because we have this sharp line, I will also increase the out of mode angle to 45. And uh, that has also taken out the, ang the, the sharpness uh, from this edge. So I'll just add it back manually by using Ctrl E mark sharp uh, to make that sharp but uh, we have also lost uh, the bevel there uh, so for that I'm just going to scale scale up this edge here but uh, make sure that uh, I'm scaling this up along let's see I want this to be at the center here so cursor to pivot point to cursor and I'm going to scale this along the X and Y plane X and Z plane. I can see by doing that, I retain, I, I bring back the bevel we had here, and uh, I don't want this bevel here. So for that, I'm going to scale this. Uh, let me make sure that I'm scaling via the 3D cursor so that I'm scaling this in the center of uh, the circle, so that we don't end up with an over shape. So now let's scale this along the X and Y plane until we get rid of uh, that bevel. Or maybe we need that. So let me just scale it back up until all the edges have uh, that bevel. Yeah, something like that. I think that looks better. Yeah, so I will continue in the next tutorial by adding a few extra details uh, because I don't think this would be strong enough to support uh, the entire so maybe we can add an extra loop here uh, so that pivots like that so thank you for watching